Thank you, Ambassador, for that incredibly kind introduction and for your commitment to advancing economic opportunities for women throughout our hemisphere. Secretary General and distinguished ambassadors, it is an honor to be with you here today. And it was a privilege to meet with many of the female ambassadors earlier who represent your countries so beautifully. Your leadership inspires us all. Thank you. As we gather here today, I want to extend my deepest sympathies to the family of Senator John McCain, an American patriot who served our country with distinction for more than six decades. The nation is united in its grief, and the world mourns the loss of a true hero and a great statesman. This afternoon, I'm honored to join you to discuss women's economic empowerment in the Western Hemisphere. We come together today united by a shared goal. We believe, we know, that the world is more prosperous, more at peace, when women across the globe can fully participate in the economy. Advancing economic opportunity for women in our hemisphere is essential to fostering lasting peace, stability, and opportunities to prosper in Central and South America and far beyond. As we mark the 70th anniversary of the Organization of American States, we reflect upon the progress that has been made in recent decades. Over the past 35 years, the number of people living in extreme poverty in Latin America and the Caribbean has been reduced by more than 60%. Since 1990, women's labor force participation rate in Latin America and the Caribbean has raised by more than 30%. And just today, as many of you may have heard, President Trump and President Peña Nieto announced a major breakthrough in our trading relationship with Mexico, which will benefit greatly both countries for decades to come. These are remarkable strides, but as you know, there is much, much more work that needs to be done. In many nations throughout our region, women still face enormous barriers to fully participating in all aspects of their country's economies and societies. Here in North America, women still are underrepresented in boardrooms and in politics, as well as in critical fields such as science and technology. We continue to experience a persistent gender wage gap in both the developed and developing worlds. Women are in fact one of the greatest undertapped resources for accelerating global economic growth. Research has shown the strong correlation between prosperity of a country and its level of gender equality. For example, one recent study estimates that increasing Latin American women's participation in the workforce could grow the Latin American economy by over a trillion dollars within a decade. Our administration is committed to the economic empowerment of women across the globe as a matter of national security. When women are empowered, communities thrive and countries prosper, which is the best and most sure path to self-reliance. The President's national security strategy states, societies that empower women to participate fully in civic and economic life are more prosperous and more peaceful. To this end, our administration has launched bold new initiatives to empower women to succeed in the global economy. Last fall, we partnered with the World Bank as the founding member of the Women Entrepreneurs Finance Initiative, also known as WeFi. Through this initiative, we have increased access to capital, markets, and mentorship so women in the developing world can start and grow a business. A first allocation of $120 million is expected to mobilize over $1.6 billion in additional public-private sector funds, which will unlock vast opportunities for women entrepreneurs across the developing world. We have also launched USAID's Women Connect Challenge to increase women's access to digital technology. 
Last year, the President signed into law the Woman, Peace and Security Act, aimed at engaging women to help us prevent conflict and advance peace. And in April, I traveled to Lima, Peru to join OPEC CEO Ray Washburn to announce OPEC's 2X initiative, which Ray will tell you a little bit more about later, but really has the potential to be transformative within our hemisphere. Since launch, we have committed more than $195 million to empower women entrepreneurs across Latin America and the Caribbean. We will continue to build upon our efforts to further expand and accelerate women's economic empowerment globally. In doing so, we have identified three primary areas to focus our work. First, we will advance workforce development and vocational education so women have the skills and training necessary to secure family-sustaining jobs in their local economies. Second, we will promote women's entrepreneurship and provide women with access to capital, markets, technical assistance, and networks. Third, we will strive to eliminate the legal and cultural barriers that constrain women from being able to fully and freely participate in their local economies. The United States is committed to pursuing these goals and furthering the success of programs like 2X Americas. Because when we invest in women, our economies soar, our communities flourish, and our nations achieve greater stability and peace. I ask you to join us as we work towards this vision for our hemisphere. If we seize this opportunity, we will set free the potential of our citizens, unleash unprecedented growth and innovation, and create a safer, more prosperous, and just future for our people and for the entire region. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for this focus on such a tremendously important initiative. Thank you, Secretary General, for hosting us here today. Thank you, Ms. Trump, for your presentation. Our second guest speaker is Mr. Ray Washburn, a Texas-based investor with a history of heading successful businesses across several fields, was 